Welcome to Tutorial 5. In this tutorial, we will cover how to set up a mixed liquor suspended solids controller to automatically adjust the biosolids wastage rate in order to meet a specified MLSS set point. We will also cover how to set up a dissolved oxygen controller that automatically changes the aeration rate in order to meet a dissolved oxygen set point. To begin, open the layout completed in Tutorial 1 and save it as Tutorial 5, using the Save As option on the File menu. If you don't have a copy of the layout from Tutorial 1, you can recreate it, or go to File, Sample Layouts, Tutorials, and select Tutorial 1. We'll begin by opening the Plug Flow Tanks Aeration Setup menu. To do this, right-click on the Plug Flow Tank and select Operational from the Input Parameters menu. We're now going to set the Specify Oxygen Transfer By drop-down menu to Entering Airflow. Next, we need to identify the manipulated variable for the Mixed Liquor Suspended Solids controller. The most logical variable for this is the wastage flow rate, which in this case is the pump flow from the clarifier. To access some of the pump flow control parameters, right-click on the clarifier and select Operational from the Input Parameters menu. Next, we'll need to turn the pump flow controller on to change its control parameters. Additional pump flow controller parameters can be seen by pressing the More button at the bottom of the pump flow section. When you click More, a new dialog will open and display these parameters. Change the control variable to XMLSS where X is the variable name for the total suspended solids and MLSS is the name of the stream, making XMLSS the variable that corresponds to the total suspended solids in the aeration basin's effluent stream. As some people may be confused by this, we can go back to the layout and turn on the stream labels. You can see that the effluent stream we're interested in is labeled MLSS. Let's return to the Pumped Flow More window. Now that we've specified the control variable for our controller, let's set the controller's tuning constants. First, we'll change the controller's sampling time to 0.05 days. The sampling time of the controller represents the frequency with which the controller samples the control variable. We'll leave the controller type as a PID velocity controller and the default gain integral, and derivative times. Next, switch the controller effect on the control variable direct to off. This means that the manipulated variable, the wastage flow rate, is increased in order to reduce the control variable. Finally, set the maximum pump flow rate to 200 meters cube per day, and accept the changes. Now that we've got the controller's constants set, let's change the set point to 2000 mg per liter and click Accept. That's it. We've got the model set up. Now we're ready to start working on the simulation. Since we've made changes to the model, we'll have to rebuild the simulation code. For this tutorial, we're going to need control over some of the controller's constants. To keep things organized, create a new input control tab to place them on. To create the input controls, right click on the clarifier in the layout window and select Operational from the input parameters menu. Drag and drop the set point, proportional gain, integral time, and derivative time onto the new input control tab. Remember to accept these changes. Now that we've got the controls we need in place, let's set the limits for each of their slider controls. Just like in Tutorial 1, click the Input Control Properties button. For this tutorial, we'll need to set the maximum set point to 4000, the maximum proportional gain to 50, and the maximum integral and derivative times to 10 days. Now that we've set up our input controls, we'll need a way to display our variables. 
Just like in tutorial 1, we're going to create a new graph, but this time, we will display the mixed liquor suspended solids concentration, the influent flow, and the wastage flow. Create a new output tab for the graph, and then right click on the influent. Select flow from the output variables menu, and drag the flow variable to the output tab to create a new graph. Next, right click on the effluent of the aeration tank and select composite variables from the output variables menu. Drag the mixed liquor suspended solids variable onto the same graph. Finally, right click on the wastage flow on the clarifier and select flow from the output variables menu. Drag the flow variable onto the graph. Now that we've got all of our variables on the graph, click the Auto Arrange button to quickly resize it. Using the Output Graph Properties window, change the graph title to Influent Flow, MLSS, and WAS. We're going to need to scale the axes separately. Set the Influent Flow range from 0 to 5,000 meters cubed per day. The Mixed Liquor Suspended Solids concentration range from 0 to 5,000 grams per meter cubed, and the wastage flow rate range from 0 to 600 meters cubed per day. Now that we have the graph ready, let's create a scenario with a sinusoidal influent flow pattern. On the simulation control bar, click Default Scenario and select New. We will derive the scenario from the default and call it Sinusoidal Influent Flow. Now that we've created a new scenario, let's make the influent flow sinusoidal. Right click on the influent object and select Flow Data from the Flow menu. In the Flow Data dialog, change the flow type to sinusoidal and accept the change. Now that we have the influent set up, Let's run a quick 10-day dynamic simulation using the default input values. You'll notice that while the mixed liquor suspended solids are being held fairly constant, the wastage flow rate fluctuates too wildly. Let's try reducing the proportional gain to 0.001, the integral time to 10 days, and the derivative time to 0 days, and see if this helps. Well, that didn't work. We stopped the wastage flow rate from jumping between two extremes, but now the mixed liquor suspended solids concentration is far from our set point. We could attempt to manually tune this controller, but luckily GPSX can tune it for us. To do this, we'll have to activate the pumped flow control tuning mode. Right click on the final clarifier and select operational from the input parameters menu. On the operational dialog, find the pumped flow section and click on the more button. Turn the pump flow control tuning on. Change the fractional step size to 0.5 and accept the changes. To do the tuning, we'll have to turn the controller off. Now change the pumped flow value to 100 meters cubed per day. The fractional step size we entered in the more dialog now corresponds to a step in the pumped flow rate from 100 meters cubed per day to 150 meters cubed per day. To make life easier for ourselves, let's add the ability to switch the MLSS controller on and off to our input control tab. We no longer have to open the clarifier's operational menu to switch the controller on and off. To tune the controller, first turn the controller on and run a zero day steady state simulation. Once the simulation is complete, turn the controller off and run a 10-day dynamic simulation. When the 10-day dynamic simulation completes, you will be asked if you want to view the tuning constants. Click Yes. To view the constants, 
Open the command window by clicking on the Simulation Control drop-down menu on the Simulation Control toolbar, and select Command Window. At the bottom of the command window, you will find the suggested PID tuning constants for the XMLSS controller. Let's set up the controller again and enter these constants. First, switch the pump flow control tuning off, and then turn the XMLSS controller back on. Now that we've got the controller back on, let's enter the constants given to us in the command window. With the constants entered, let's return to our graph and run another 10-day simulation. You can see from the mixed liquor suspended solids concentration and the wastage flow rate that these values are a good start for tuning our PID. Take a moment to try adjusting the PID constants by hand and adjusting the flow rate during the simulation. Next, we are going to cover how to create an automatic DO controller. First, we'll create a new scenario named DO control. Open the Plug Flow Tanks Aeration Setup menu by right-clicking on the tank and selecting Operational from the Input Parameters menu. Set the Specify Oxygen Transfer By drop-down menu to Using a DO Controller to activate the automatic DO controller. Click on the DO Setpoint Array button in the Aeration Control menu. All of the default setpoints are two. We'll accept this for now. Create a new input control tab and place the DO setpoints of the first and last reactors in the plug flow tank on it. Once again, we are going to need a graph to display the relevant outputs of this simulation. Create a new output tab and let's create a graph of the dissolved oxygen in the first and fourth tanks of the plug flow tank and the free and ionized ammonia. The dissolved oxygen concentration can be found by right clicking on the plug flow tank, selecting output variables, state variables in the individual reactors, and then the dissolved oxygen in reactor array button. Place both the first and fourth on the same graph. Click the Auto Arrange button to resize the graph. The free and ionized ammonia can be found by selecting State Variables from the Output Variables menu in the Plug Flow tank. Drag and drop free and ionized ammonia in Reactor onto the graph. Change the graph options as you see fit and set the scale's maximum to 10. Run a simulation and vary the flow rate and DO setpoints. You will find that the automatic controller behaves quite well without tuning. And that's the basics of PID and DO controllers in GPSX. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in information on our other software products such as CAP Networks for preliminary design and costing, ToxChem for industrial wastewater treatment modeling, or WattPro for drinking water treatment modeling, you can visit our website at www.hydromantis.com for further information.